Parallel drum compression is kind of like a secret of the pros to get your drums to cut through in a mix. It's a huge part of a big punchy drum sound. It's actually not that hard to do and it can make your Logic drum sound way more real. Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. This is the third video in a four part series of how to make Logic drum sound more real. And if you haven't been following along, first of all, I highly recommend you go back and start from the beginning because it's gonna help out a lot. It's gonna make a lot more sense. And secondly, let me show you what we're doing in the series so you know that it's actually worth your time. We're we're taking our drums from sounding like this and making them sound like this. way more realistic, right? Now, parallel compression is a big part of this, but ultimately it's just one of a bunch of little steps that are adding up to giving us a much more realistic drum sound. So instead of making you just memorize a bunch of stuff from this video series or having to keep coming back to this video series, which would probably be good for the channel actually now that I think about it, but instead of that, I've put together a completely free checklist that goes through all these steps that you can just quickly reference back to anytime you're working on your drum mix. It's really gonna help you out. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go and get into part three, which is our parallel compression. All right, there's two steps to setting up parallel drum compression. The first is to create a parallel compression bus. This sounds complicated, but it's really actually very simple. A bus is just a track that we are sending other tracks to. And so in this case, we're going to over compress that parallel track that we are bussing other tracks to so that we can blend it up into the overall drum sound to add a whole lot of punch and weight to the drum so it really cuts through in the mix. The second step is setting up your compressor on there for the parallel compression. So we're gonna go over both really quickly. Now setting up a bus, as I said, is actually fairly simple. To create a new bus, you just take a track that you would be sending to that bus. So for example, the snare top is one that we'd send. And you go here where it says sends go down to bus, and then just select any of these unused buses. You can tell they're used because they're gonna have some sort of arrow indicating that there's something being sent there already. We're gonna go to bus four, and then you see over on the right side, it's created this new track for us, and we can see at the top it says bus four, so we know that it's receiving sound from this send. We can now turn this knob to affect the amount that we're sending over that bus. So you can uh, you just send a little bit or you can send a lot. I tend to just go ahead and hit option and click and it's gonna send the full amount to that signal. And then I also change this to be pre-fader. This is really key, especially with parallel compression because uh, if it's post-fader or post-pan, meaning that it's gonna be after this setting and this setting, then if I were to adjust this volume fader, it's gonna change the amount that's being sent over to that bus. I don't want that to happen. I wanna make sure that bus is always getting the exact same amount. So I'm gonna set this to pre-fader and then I just hold option and click on this and it sets it up to 0.0, .0 just unison sending the full signal from that snare drum. So that's the way you would create the track and then you can come over here and title this something like P comp for parallel compression. Go over here, set up a compressor and we'll go through how to actually set this compressor in just a second. So that's how we would create a bus. Now, because we're using the SoCal preset, they've actually created a parallel compression bus for us. They call it punch and it's right here. And you can see, if you look at the top of this, it says bus one. So we can look over here and see that the kick drum is already being sent to that. So the way you typically set up parallel compression is you send all of the drum shells to the parallel compressor, meaning your kick drum, your snare drum, your toms. You don't send the rooms and the overheads and anything that's really getting the cymbals or the overall drum sound. You just want those close mics from the drum sound and we're gonna over compress those and blend them up in. So the kick is one that I would definitely send. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this parallel compression track that they've already set up, this punch track, as our bus. So we'll just be sending to bus one. I'll go ahead and delete this track so that we don't get confused. And then let's set up a send from these other tracks. So I would send from kick in which it's already doing. I wouldn't actually send from kick out. If we listen to that in solo, this is kind of like just a sub kick, just like the super low end. So I don't need that to go, I don't need that to be extra punchy. Super low end like that has a lot of uh, energy, so it just gets messy really quickly. So I'm gonna send the snare top. I'm gonna hold command on the keyboard so I can select multiple, snare bottom, the tom high, the tom mid, and the tom low. We'll go up here to bus, SoCal, bus one punch, and then I can change all these to be pre-fader, and you'll see that flip sides. So before the bus is on the right side, the knob is on the right side and it's green. Once I switch it to pre-fader, it's on the left side and it's blue, so you know that it's a pre-fader send. And then I'm gonna go ahead and send these two at the full 
signal, just hold option and send the full amount. For the toms, I'm actually gonna do a little bit less. So we'll go ahead and change this here to pre-fader. And then I'm just gonna do something more like this. You can set the same level if you select multiple tracks, it will just multiple at the same time. So now we have in this punch track, let's go and take off what they'd set up here. We'll set up and customize our own to make it sound optimal. Sounds like this, let's bring up the volume here. Just your kick and your snare, and then when the tom it gets to the tom part. So it's a whole shell sound, right? So we're gonna go ahead and set a compressor on here. And for parallel compression, I really like the Studio FET. I also really like the Vintage VCA, even the Classic VCA. Uh, but let's just go with the Vintage VCA. Now with the compressor, you set a threshold. When sound passes that threshold, it gets turned down. How quickly it gets turned down is determined by an attack time. So if you have a slower or medium attack time, it's gonna let that initial hit through and then turn it down. If you have a super, super fast attack time, it's not really gonna let it through. If you have a slow attack time, it's kind of just gonna move as if there was no compression happening. So what I like to do with drums is have kind of a medium-ish attack time that's gonna let the initial hit through, then clamp down, and it's gonna make it a punchier hit. It's going to make it a more intense hit each time that drum hits or those drums hit. And then you have a ratio and that's just how intensely it's turning it down. Is it just turning it down a little bit or is it turning it down really extremely, right? So for parallel compression, I kind of want to do everything over the top. So I like to set a really, really intense uh, ratio, something like 10 to 1, maybe 15 to 1. Technically, it's limiting at that point. And then attack time, usually somewhere around 20-ish milliseconds, release time somewhere around 50 milliseconds. We do want to turn auto release off. That's what that, this button is right here. And we also want to turn auto gain off. I just don't like auto gain. I like to manually make up my gain instead. And then we're just going to bring this ratio down until we're getting the kind of compression we want. So let's solo this uh, parallel compression track here. Let's add a little makeup gain. make this ratio even more extreme. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of wild. Check this out, turn this off. Just normal tracks, add this on. Like way more punch, way more body to these drums, right? We can play around with this. I actually might want to slow this down a little bit. A little bit punchier to me. So anywhere 20 to 30 milliseconds is usually the sweet spot on a parallel track for me, at least when I'm trying to make it punchy like this. And now all we have to do is just take this fader and blend this up in with our uncompressed or less compressed overall drum sound. We're gonna add a whole bunch of punch to the drums while still having a very natural overall sound to them. So check us out. We're gonna start with none and then I'm gonna blend it up in. I turn this off, and back on. I'll exaggerate it a little bit more. Here's off, back on. Way more punch to those drums, right? Okay. So that is parallel compression. This is a godsend. This is kind of like a secret of the pros for getting your drums to cut through in a dense mix. And just to have really full sounding drums while there's still a bit of that natural feel to them. They're not over compressed in general, but we're blending up this over compressed signal to get more weight and punch out of the drums. It's really a great trick. So lastly, let's just listen to the original just logic kind of stock drum sound and then where we are now. way more natural sounding. Yeah. Okay, way more natural sounding already. In the next video, we're going to start dialing in some realistic space around these drums to make them feel huge and add some depth to them. Now, before you go, be sure to grab the Make Logic Drum Sound Real checklist from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It just walks you through all the little steps that we're doing because none of these are huge things. They're all little steps and you gotta do all of them to get to this end result if you want a really big, realistic drum sound. It's completely free from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. Just make sure that you can go through all these steps without having to keep coming back to this video series. I'd love to hear from you. Have you been doing parallel compression in any of your mixes on drums or on anything else? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week when we're gonna create realistic space around these drums. One thing at a time.